Welcome to PIC Computing GCSE ICT video 12 where we're going to look at communication devices and media. Now how things have moved on from say a time like the 1980s we may have had wonderful things like tape cassettes to be able to listen to music or superb games like the Rubik's Cube. We certainly had the fashion and the hairstyles they were excellent but when it came to communicating with one another we had limited choice. We had the telephone, we could write a letter, we could even visit somebody and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Some people, but very few people, had mobile phones. They might look a little bit like that, or even like that, but like I say, the choices of communication were very limited. Nowadays, we have an absolute multitude of different ways to be able to communicate with each other, most of them involving technology. We still have the telephone, we have something called a fax machine, email, we can text one another, we have something called instant messaging, internet chat rooms, internet forums, something called voice over IP, and video conferencing. Now for each of these in a GCSE exam you might be expected to be able to define them or describe how they work, but also to talk about advantages and disadvantages of each. Now in this video we'll have a closer look at each of these communications devices but we're going to leave the task of thinking about advantages and disadvantages of each up to you so you can do your own research and use your own common sense to find out what is good and what is bad about each one towards the end of the video we will look at email more closely and the advantages and disadvantages of email but for now let's just have a quick look at each technology firstly the telephone the landline has been around for over a hundred years but more likely these days we might use mobile phones whilst we're on the go. Over 80% of us in the UK own a mobile phone. There's something called an internet phone which you can plug into your uh, internet connection and that will make phone calls free for you. Um, once you've got your internet connection paid for, any ongoing phone calls are free if you've got an internet phone. Something called a satellite phone what might be used for places where there is no landline or mobile reception or internet connection. It might look a bit funny like that and there's an example of one being used in the military and there they've got this uh, aerial that allows the phone to be connected up to satellites in space. A fax machine is a bit like a photocopier except the photocopy goes through the telephone lines to somebody else's fax machine so that's used a lot in business to be able to fax through um, documents from one business to another. Email. So email has been around since the say the 1990s really um, and is a way of sending one message um, from one computer to another computer over the internet. So we'd use our PCs typically for that but of course nowadays more and more using mobile phones and smartphones to send emails as well. We'll talk a little bit more about email later on uh, in this video. SMS short messaging service or as we might know it more texting is of course uh, used on smartphones a lot but was on older mobile phones as well um, and I'm sure that you lot will know lots about the different acronyms and text language that are used um, in texting lol instant messaging is where you might have a program on your computer that allows you to have real-time chat so almost like a face-to-face -face conversation but without the face-to-face -face. so it happens instantaneously you leave a message and then somebody chats straight back to you in real time um, an example of where this might be used on mobiles is certainly on Blackberry's BBM Blackberry Messenger so instant messaging is real-time chat rooms are also generally real-time as well uh, but chat rooms might involve a lot more people as you can see on the left hand side there and are generally um, on websites and aren't programs you need to install onto uh, your computer or your phone online forums are also websites but aren't real time so you might leave a message in a thread on a forum to do with a topic that you're interested in and then somebody won't get back to you straight away it might take hours or possibly even days for somebody to respond to your post 
where you might be asking a question or discussing a particular topic. This thing called VOIP stands for Voice Over IP, where IP stands for Internet Protocol. So it's a way of being able to talk over the internet lines. And we might have used Skype for Voice Over IP, but with Skype as well, if you've got a webcam, we can see images too. So it's almost like something like video conferencing, which we'll look at in a second. Um, to be able to get your voice into your computer through the internet and out through somebody else's speakers across the other side of the world, possibly you'd of course use a microphone to put your voice into the computer. Video conferencing is used a lot in business to be able to hold conferences and see people and talk to people from over the other side of the world. Advantages and disadvantages. I mentioned before you need to know advantages and disadvantages of these technologies, but we're only going to look at email in this video and what you often get asked is compare email to a alternative method so here we're going to compare email to the traditional postal system where you might send a letter through the post emails arrive in seconds um, whereas letters will take days to arrive to the recipient so that's a good thing about email compared to the postal system sending an email is free once you have your PC purchased and your internet connection paid for, there is no ongoing cost with sending emails, whereas there always is with letters. You have to buy stamps for each letter that you send in. With email, you can attach large documents to be sent through the email. Uh, including large printed documents in a, a letter would cost lots of money and it almost becomes a parcel, doesn't it? With emails, you can send to multiple people all in one go. You'd have to send multiple letters to multiple people. With email, messages can be encrypted to avoid interceptions. That means you can put some security on them so that if a hacker got hold of your email on the networks, then they'd be unlikely to be able to open it. Whereas if somebody gets hold of your letter en route, then they've just got to open it, haven't they, to be able to get to some possibly some confidential information in there. So what's good about the postal system compared to email? Well, email is often seen as being less personal and less formal, whereas a letter is seen as a personal thing and is more official. Email will not be sent to the recipient even if one letter of an address is wrong. So if you get one letter of an email address incorrect, then it won't get to where it's supposed to be going. With a letter, uh, even if you get like a street name wrong or you spell something wrong in the address, it's still going to get there probably if the postcode is correct. With email, your computer is more likely to catch a virus uh, from an email and you're very, very unlikely to contract a virus from a postal letter. Physical items can't be sent through email. So if you ordered a mobile phone, then you can't be sent your new mobile phone through email, but you can through the post, of course. And email might require more training than being able to write and send a letter. And training is often a key thing you need to talk about when talking about advantages and disadvantages of these communication medias and devices.